Welcome to Preschool Storytime with the Long Beach Public Library. My name is Miss Shana. You can still sign up for summer reading by visiting longbeach.beanstack.org. And don't forget to enter this week's activity code, LAVENDER, into the activity tab of your Beanstack account. It's time for our color song. If you're wearing any red, any red, if you're wearing any red, any red If you're wearing any red, lie down and go to bed If you're wearing any red, any red If you're wearing any orange, any orange If you're wearing any orange, any orange If you're wearing any orange, stir a bowl of porridge Kind of rhymes, right? Orange porridge. If you're wearing any orange, any orange. If you're wearing any yellow, any yellow. If you're wearing any yellow, any yellow. If you're wearing any yellow, bend your arm at the elbow. Elbow. <laughs> if you're wearing any yellow, any yellow. If you're wearing any green, any green. If you're wearing any green, any green If you're wearing any green, bounce on your trampoline If you're wearing any green, any green If you're wearing any blue, any blue If you're wearing any blue, any blue If you're wearing any blue, be like a cow and say If you're wearing any purple, any purple If you're wearing any purple, any purple If you're wearing any purple, crawl around like a turtle If you're wearing any purple, any purple Today's story time is all about the color Purple. I'm thinking of something that's purple, that grows on a vine, tastes divine, and can be smashed into jam or jelly. Grapes. I'm thinking of something that's purple, that grows in a garden, smells wonderful and helps us feel calm. Lavender. I'm thinking of something that's purple, that's shaped like a potato, and like a tomato, it's often confused for a vegetable, but it's really a fruit. An eggplant. This story is called Sally and the Purple Socks. It's by Liz Beshtold. There's your purple socks. <laughs> Looks like a little package is getting delivered. I wonder what it is. Sally couldn't wait to try on her new purple socks. But they were too small. Look at how tiny they are. Then she saw a note. Once removed from the box, these socks will grow to the size ordered. Oops, said Sally. Did I tell them my size? But after some airing, the purple socks fit perfectly. Sally danced in them. She cleaned house in them. She relaxed in her lovely purple socks. Until. How odd, said Sally. Now my socks are too big. Oh, but they're so soft. So... 
Sally wore her soft purple scarf and cap while she gardened. But when she came in, oh dear, quacked Sally. Still, they're so cozy. So what did she use them as now? Curtains. By lunchtime, oh dear, Sally grumbled. This really ruffles my feathers. But they're so warm. These socks just keep growing and growing, don't they? Sally napped under her warm purple blankets. When she woke up, ah, now this has got to stop, quacked Sally. Will they ever stop growing, you think? Sally spent the rest of the day moving furniture. She's got to make room for these big old socks, huh? That night, she was so tired, she slept on her luxurious purple carpet. Early the next morning, Sally awoke to honking horns. My socks, she cried. Your socks are blocking traffic, hollered the neighbors. Look, oh dear, what is she gonna do now? So Sally hauled her socks into the backyard and invited all her neighbors to a circus. And everyone came. Wow. When suddenly it began to rain. It rained and rained and rained until Sally's lovely, soft, cozy, warm, luxurious purple socks fit perfectly again. Just in time for the first snow. There's nothing I love more than a cozy pair of socks on a winter evening. <laughs> the end. This is the peanut butter jelly song. <clears throat> peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. First you take the peanuts and you dig them. You dig them, you dig them, dig them, dig them. Then you smash them, you smash them, you smash them, smash them, smash them. Then you spread them. You spread them, you spread them, spread them, spread them. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Then you take the grapes and you pick them, you pick them, you pick them, pick them, pick them. Then you smash them, you smash them, you smash them, smash them, smash them. Then you spread them, you spread them, you spread them, spread them, spread them. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Then you take the sandwich and you bite it. You bite it. You bite it, bite it, bite it. Then you chew it. You chew it. You chew it, chew it, chew it. Then you swallow it. Gulp. You swallow it. Gulp. You swallow it, swallow it, swallow it. Gulp. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, Jelly! This is the fable of the fox and the grapes. And if you've ever heard somebody say, sour grapes, that's where this came from. This version is retold by Blake Huena and illustrated by Beth Hughes. Aesop was a storyteller who wrote hundreds of stories called fables. These short tales often have animals for characters and each story is meant to teach a moral or a lesson. In this fable, a hungry fox spots a bunch of juicy grapes. They hang from a vine way up high in a tree. What lesson can we learn from the fox and the grapes? Turn the page to find out. 
Oh, said the fox, 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 with bright white socks, socks, socks. I want those grapes, grapes, grapes. That's what he thought, thought, thought. The fox jumped up, up, up. He jumped so high, high, high. He could not reach, reach, reach up to that vine, vine, vine. Oh, said the fox, 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 with bright white socks, socks, socks. I want those grapes, grapes, grapes. That's what he thought, thought, thought. Again, he jumped, 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 but crashed back down, down, down with a big thud, thud, thud. Oh, what a sound, sound, sound. Oh, said the fox, 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 with bright white socks, socks, socks. I need those grapes, grapes, grapes. That's what he thought, thought, thought. Again, he tried, 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 and tried some more, more, more. He jumped and crashed, crashed, crashed till he was sore, sore, sore. Oh, said the fox, 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 with bright white socks, socks, socks. I never wanted those grapes anyway. They're probably sour. Then off he stomped, stomped, stomped. Hmm. So the fox has got sour grapes, right? So the moral goes, goes, goes. It's easy to hate, hate, hate what we can't have, have, have like those ripe grapes, grapes, grapes. The end. Was there ever something you wanted so bad but you couldn't have it? Maybe some ice cream for dessert? And then you're like, well, if I can't have ice cream, well, I don't like ice cream anymore. That's called sour grapes. <laughs> the end. Purple Little Bird loved everything purple. He lived in a purple little house with a purple little roof and a purple little chimney with a purple little staircase, a purple little fence, and a purple garden. Purple Little Bird worked very hard to make his house perfect. But no matter what he did, something just wasn't right. So one day, he packed a bag and went looking for a truly perfect place. Purple Little Bird walked all the way to Brown Bear's cave. I'm looking for the perfect place, he said. My cave is warm and cozy, said Brown Bear. It is warm and cozy, said Purple Little Bird, but it's too dark. So Purple Little Bird climbed to the top of a steep mountain where he found Gray Goat. I'm looking for the perfect place, said Purple Little Bird. It's bright and sunny here, said Gray Goat. It is bright and sunny, said Purple Little Bird, but whoosh, it's too windy. So Purple Little Bird continued on until he met Yellow Camel. Maybe this is the perfect place, said Purple Little Bird. My desert is nice and quiet, said Yellow Camel. It is nice and quiet, said Purple Little Bird, but it's too dusty. So Purple Little Bird went on and he found Blue Frog in his pond. I hope this is the perfect place, said Purple Little Bird. My pond is very cool and refreshing, said Blue Frog. 
It is cool and refreshing, said Purple Little Bird, but it's too damp. So Purple Little Bird kept going until he saw a beautiful tree. And a pink possum hung there. He told the pink possum all the places he'd been. We know a place. I know a place that isn't too dark, windy, dusty, or damp, said the possum. So Purple Little Bird followed the possum. And to his surprise, they stopped at a purple little house with a purple little roof and a purple little chimney and a purple little staircase and a purple little fence and a purple little garden. Purple Bird looked around. You know what's wrong with this place, he said. It's much too purple. But now I know what to do. So they made it perfect. The end. Thank you so much for joining me for story time. We'll see you next time. Take care.